Hello and welcome to the Blue Tweezer channel with myself Alan from the channel as usual and uh, tonight, uh, well this afternoon or this morning wherever you are uh, we're just going to do a uh, quick playthrough of the new GMT game Prime Minister uh, we'll be doing the solo Clockwork 1 uh, system uh, which is a sort of basic solo and um, and we'll see how we go um, from just trying it out a little bit. It's quite tough, quite tough to win, quite tough to win. I'm just going to send out some uh, some messages, of course. Give me a second. Right, that should do it, um, and uh, we'll crack on. A as ever, if you can let me know in the chat that you can see and hear me, okay. I never trust the old, uh, the old uh, computer and uh, electrical things. Um, everything sounds seems fine from this point, but uh, you never know. So do let us know, and if you don't let us know, I'll obviously think that there's something wrong. Um, so yes, do pipe in if you can. That will be great. Right, so brand new game from GMT. I got it earlier this week. Uh, it's a one to four player game uh, on the Victorian Parliament, British Parliament. Um, and uh, yeah, about uh, being Prime Minister and uh, getting victory points as usual with these kind of games. Uh, so I'll just take you through the game uh, briefly. And this is only the Clockwork One scenario. So um, William, thanks very much. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, uh, just the clockwork one scenario, which is quite basic. Uh, it uh, a lot of the multiplayer stuff isn't there, and also there is a second clockwork two uh, system, uh, which builds on clockwork one, um, which I won't do this evening. Big difference between the two is that uh, in uh, in clockwork one you represent the prime minister, and you need to stay the prime minister uh, until you get to 100 victory points. Uh, if you ever lose power, then you've lost the game. Whereas in Clockwork 2, uh, that's not important anymore. Getting to the 100 victory points is more important. Is is the way to win uh, again. But you can be out of power, back in power, uh, as you like. Uh, okay. Uh, so the track at the top here uh, is your VPs. Uh, 100s there. Start off here. Um, I'm green. Uh, as a colour, although there's not a, not a lot of colour here um, that, that is green, so I've got my VP marker here, and then there's the Prime Minister uh, little ta uh, um, tablet there um, with my green marker, which is on a track known as Standing. So that's how how uh, Parliament thinks of me as uh, as as a Prime Minister or potential or as a Prime Minister. Um, so the uh, the game goes in a series of rounds, uh, and the rounds are uh, timed uh, on uh, bills. So bills are the laws to pass, and uh, this spot here are where the bills are. And there are three kinds of bills. There are what's known as cross-party bills, uh, which are individual cards there, liberal bills, and conservative bills. So Liberal and Conservative are the two parties and you belong to one of them and you don't change. Um, and you will place these bills and each turn you will attempt to... Um, uh, pardon, me, 
<laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I'm, maybe the Victorian version. Certainly, it's not quite like this uh, these days. But th th there is there is certain similarities, and the sort of general framework is is the same here. Uh, so each turn, uh, a bill will be passed or not passed, um, and uh, when you get through the three turns, which do the three bills that are placed, um, you then have the option to go for a general election. Uh, which is to see if you stay in power, people vote for you uh, to stay in power. Uh, if you do, uh, you can place another three bills. What you can also do with this little marker here, the election marker, is at one point when you've got you you've uh, you've decided what the bills are and the election is coming up. As a political, uh, as a prime minister, you can actually elect to uh, delay the election. Uh, and you actually take this marker off, it's just a marker to say you've delayed, and uh, that means you have another round of three, and then you must go for an election. Uh, the idea, of course, is to stay in power, and how you stay in power is most of this map, so all of this here is is future stuff, okay? Um, these are the eight areas of British... The, the, of British um, uh, the polity, shall we say, uh, uh, which are affected, uh, well, which are affected by what you do, and also will then vote for you. So uh, there are blue markers, and there are orange markers, and these are uh, either liberal or uh, or conservative. Blue is conservative, uh, orange is liberal. Um, uh, how, what the strength you have in those areas. So the eight areas are conservatives. Of course, the conservatives will be stronger than liberals there. Uh, farmers, gentry, Ireland, liberals. Of course, they'll be stronger than the conservatives in that area. Middle class, Scotland, and the workers. Um, so each, where these tabs are, these little uh, these little cylinders, uh, it gives you a number of uh, projected vote count. Okay, and this is what this bit here is this grey area here, is effectively a, a projection of how popular you'll be in in an election. So if the blue marker is up this table and it goes up here, then along and along, uh, you're more, you will win by a certain margin. So essentially that is zero margin. So by the skin of your teeth, you're in power. Um, so the blue goes up, it, the Conservatives are uh, on course to win an election. If the orange, then it's the Liberals, of course. Uh, once you actually win, um, you know, you effectively kind of reset the board and we put three new, uh, the three new bills down, etc. Um, down here, you have the track for the government MPs. So once the election is done, you kind of ignore the, uh, the, the opposition. How big the opposition is, it, it's it's not really relevant uh, in the game. But what you do count is you count the number of APs. So you have uh, the total of government MPs are on this track, and it's uh, hundreds and then tens. Don't worry about the zeros. Uh, everything's sort of rounded to nearest. Uh, then you have moderates. Uh, so these are the guys who you know will will vote for sort of fairly normal, mundane kind of bills, but then they're not. Uh, uh, they're not way out um, innovators. And then you have the partisans here. So these are a total of all the MPs. Um, the partisans are donated with these sort of pink numbers up here on some of these tracks, uh, which know how many of the MPs will be partisan, and then the moderates are the rest. So sort of, you know, the, uh, the, the moderates are the... Are, all MPs minus the partisan MPs. So these two will total the top. What you're looking for is 330 votes. That gets you um, a government and it also gets you passing a bill, mostly. Um, uh, right, so you're playing a Prime Minister and of course if you're playing the Prime Minister there is uh, what's known as the Leader of the Opposition. And that Leader of Opposition is uh, is a bot uh, known as the clockwork politician, uh, and that's the guy. That's what's going on up here. Um, <clears throat> the last thing of the board I want to say is that you've got this track up here with the picture of Queen Victoria behind her. Uh, if you're a Goons fan, you'll know what uh, a picture of Queen Victoria 
uh, Joker's about, but you probably don't. So it's very, very old English. Uh, well, well, like 70 year old English humour. Um, but uh, yeah, the um, you have the two counters for uh, the Prime Minister and the opposition here, and they're on the one track. This is known as royal favour. So occasionally the Queen might involve herself to kind of uh, uh, it, it, it gives you a um, uh, she, she might intervene to kind of upset the apple cart if you, if you see what I mean and uh, she will have a favourite which is whoever's leading on this track okay so in an election um, if you have uh, sort of your very close election she might actually say well tell you what I'm not going to let you win. I'm going to ask the prime the ask the leader of the opposition to become prime minister, and this is kind of a dangerous thing here. So it's good to have the queen on your side as long as you're ahead. Uh, it's it's great, um, but um, yeah, that can be quite difficult depending on who who your politician is. All right, so um, uh, that's that's the game in front of you. You have uh, other card decks here. Uh, you have the events deck, which is essentially uh, the bane of uh, the Prime Minister. Events, dear boy, events is, uh, is, well, is, a, is a well-known phrase uh, in British politics. Uh, it's all about the events, uh, nothing about the normal running of the country. Uh, you also have an uncertainty deck, which is kind of like a dice roller, uh, which will vary close results. And then you have a uh, supporters deck. Uh, and the supporters deck here, these are uh, famous people, uh, important people in, 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 at the time uh, in Britain who you could get on your side and may help you or increase your standing or your, your influence um, uh, by them endorsing you. So this is kind of in, you know, celebrity or famous people or powerful people endorsements. Um, uh, these are so uh, there's another deck offer in this corner with the uh, with the opposition uh, which is known as the clockwork supporters deck so it's a, it's a similar deck to the supporters deck here um, but this one is for the clockwork bot and it works in a slot in a different way so um, so very simple thing in the game is you've got to keep being prime minister until you get to 100 vps if you lose the prime ministership at any time you're out of the game. That's it. You're lost. You're lost against the bot. Um, uh, so uh, what we've got to do first is decide you know, who we are and who's our opposition. Uh, just hello. 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 Um, I've just uh, I've just we've, right, we've just started. We've just started. So, um, yeah, but it's good to see you. Thanks for thanks for popping in. I just watched watched a bit of your uh, your Marvels thing earlier. But um yeah, had to uh, had to then go and then make dinner in preparation for this. So, uh, sorry, I wasn't there for very long. Right. Uh, so we've got to decide who we are. Uh, so you've got the option of five politicians on each side. So these are the Liberals. These are the Conservatives. We've got the Earl of Rosebery, Viscount Melbourne, Viscount Palmerston, uh, W. E. Gladstone, William Gladstone, and Earl Russell for the Liberals. And on the Conservative side, we have Benjamin Disraeli, the Earl of Aberdeen, the Marquess of Salisbury, the Earl of Derby, and Sir Robert Peel. These are all historical prime ministers. So they all did, did actually do, uh, do the work in, in real time. So we're going to, I'm going to shuffle these to, so we'll work out who I'm going to be and also what side I'm going to be. Because if it's an orange character, then I'm a liberal. If it's a blue character, then I'm a Conservative or a Tory, as uh, uh, what uh, in Britain we tend to call them, because Conservative is a pretty sort of long name. Uh, Liberals, easy to say. Conservative is a bit there, so people call them Tories. And Tory is historically uh, a name of the party that Conservatives came from, so it, it is actually um, a relevant name. It's not just a nickname. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's pick out uh, who we're going to be. So do a cut, and we are going to be the Marquess of Salisbury. We are uh, going to be Conservatives, so that's uh, our politician. Now, 
in this game, in Clockwork 1, you have a kind of get-out-of-jail-free card, um, which is at some point you can sack your Prime Minister and replace him by another of your politicians. Uh, so what we need to do is, in here, is to pull out the Liberals, because they're not relevant, and we decide who our second Prime Minister is going to be. Well, the backup Prime Minister. But what we'll, we'll have a look at them, and I'll get a choice of who, I, who, who goes first and who, who's on the bench, who's a substitute on the bench. Um, but we've got Marcus of Salisbury, and we also have Sir Robert Peel. Okay, so uh, if we look, have a look at these guys, um, I'm not sure you can see it with the glare here. Move, move it across a bit. Um, so they're conservative, and uh, they, they have their name, uh, but then they have four attributes. If I go up to the camera, you'll be able to see it a bit, a bit easier. There are actually five attributes, but each politician is missing one. So uh, we have campaign, debate, hobnob and influence. Um, and uh, actually, I think the Marquess of Salisbury has exactly the same ones. Uh, yes, they do. So uh, the other one is known as flatter. So uh, what campaign means is that you can improve some of these boxes with an action. Uh, for the Marcus of Salisbury, it is C or F or I. C for the Conservatives, F for the Farmers, and I for Ireland. And for Sir Peel, he's got G or I or M. So it's uh, G for the Gentry, I for Ireland, or M for the Middle Class. Um, also note that uh, on... Uh, these two guys, they've got a number next to them, and uh, for Sir Robert Peel, it's got a campaign two, the rest are one, and then for the Marcus of Salisbury, it's on influence two. So that means they can do a le level two action. The level two action just means it's kind of a doubler. Uh, you can do double the thing you you could uh, you could do as a level one. Um, so, uh, campaign we dealt with, it's about improving these markers on the conservative side, so the blue sides, we don't touch the, the orange sides. Um, debate is to improve the number of votes uh, for a bill. And there's these markers here with the tracks up to zero, and then goes to 10 to 100 plus, and then down to minus 80. Uh, and uh, we can move this marker with a debate action. We have the hobnob action. Uh, Hobnob allows you to take one of the supporters cards and you can either play it immediately or you can hold it in your hand. Uh, and then there's the influence. Uh, and influence allows you to change the uh, the the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the ratio of partisans to moderates either way. So you can you can do a plus 10 minus 10 uh, across. Uh, the one that's not here is flattery. Uh, to flatter and flat, uh, flatter is about going up to the queen and saying she's wonderful so that you would get more favour. So both of our prime ministers uh, effectively can't actually uh, help with favour. But some supporters might be able to, but that's kind of a problem here. So who are we going to go with first? So I think, I think we'll go with Sir Robert Peel first. Uh, his campaign too will boost our coverage of votes. Um, influence is great, uh, but uh, as you'll see with the bills, um, early on in the game, it's not that important, not critical, or not as critical about the ratios here. So we'll stick Marcus of Salisbury up there, and we have Sir Robert Peel as our guy. So we need an opposition. So we have the clockwork card, um, politician cards here. So of course, we're not going to come up with the uh, the conservatives because they're uh, they're on our side so we're just looking at the liberal ones here and uh, we just need to pick up uh, there's only ever one of these we just need to uh, pick which one we're going to be working with so uh, and I'll pick one from the middle not looking at it honest uh, we've got Gladstone so uh, as you see yeah uh, uh, he's so in the uh, in the clockwork too, you can be a prime. Uh, the clockwork bot can be the prime minister or the opposition. Uh, this is the opposition leader side. Uh, with clockwork one, they're only opposition because as soon as they become prime minister, you've lost the game. Uh, so that's our 
So currently we have Sir Robert Peel up against uh, Gladstone. It's a bit like a sort of gladiatorial thing, isn't it, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. In the orange corner kind of stuff. Uh, and the blue corner is Sir Robert Peel. And uh, in the orange corner is uh, William Gladstone. Yay! Kind of thing. Um, yeah, not very impressive, is it? Uh, good. So what's in the turn? What's in the turn? So uh, we have a turn sequence here. It's known as the parliamentary order. So the first thing that happens uh, is um, we get some victory points. That's it for the start of the game. Uh, we don't get it on the first turn, but normally at the start of the game, if you're prime minister, you get four victory points, four, green, uh, four in that green box, and the opposition leader gets two. So we, we will naturally go up the track. Uh, so it kind of gives you a... Uh, a timing function as well. The VPs are a kind of a timing function as well. Uh, then the, the other thing you do is says take uh, action cube income. So uh, on your uh, on your two tracks here, uh, on your two uh, placemats here, for the prime minister you start with a standing of eleven. That's the different coloured box here, and for every number below that that has a white marker on it, these white big cubes. That's an action cube. So currently I would start with three actions in a turn. Uh, the leader opposition starts at five and they only have two action cubes. They'd have to be at eight standing to get their third action cube. If I got to 13, I would get a fourth action cube. It's good to be the prime minister. Um, <clears throat> so we make, uh, to be honest, you know, we just kind of, make sure that they're in the right place so we know how many actions we have. Then, um, in a turn, we'll have bill selection. So this only happens once every three turns. So what I will do is I will pick six bills from either the Conservative or the Cross Party. I won't, won't get it from the Liberal bills. That's, that's a bit of a dull thing to do. Um, cross Party bills or the Conservative bills. Pick, uh, get six, flip them over, and I will decide three of them to go into these three slots here. Um, now, uh, cross-party bills are, are not actually that advantageous to you. They might be. Um, thanks, Jester. Uh, uh, so they actually earn exactly the same VPs for each side. So the bot will get VPs, and you'll get VPs the same number. You will get a reward potentially get a reward as well as the prime minister uh, but that's really it uh, the big thing is that you don't lose if you get it through that's uh, that's the main thing uh, if you fail to get a bill through you will lose standing uh, and the opposition leader will gain standing all right um, and also the opposition leader will gain vps as well so getting bills passed is great ish Particularly cross-party ones are okay, but it's kind of the thing you need to do. Uh, conservative bills, or you know, the the uh, the, the, the bills which are uh, uh, biased, if you like. Uh, so this uh, this blue deck here. So these are much tougher to get through because it's difficult to get cross-party support for this bill. So you've got to have a big majority. At the moment, we've got a wafer-thin majority. We have a majority of three hundred and thirty. Uh, which is a majority of one, effectively. We win as long as nobody else votes against us, and that can happen. Um, so you surely really shouldn't touch the Conservative bills or your, type, your, your stack of bills until you have a healthy majority. Also, what you want is usually you'll want a lot of partisans um, because if it's because they're, they're quite biased some of your own party might not actually want to vote for it because it's a little bit too extreme. So you want the extremists. You want a load of extremists in Parliament on your side so you can part these. But Now, these bills you only get victory points for. The other side don't. And you'll get, the you'll get potentially a benefit as well. Sometimes the benefits can be bad because of the bias of the bill means that the country think this is a bit too extreme. We don't really like it. So you can lose uh, your position in the campaigns quite often uh, and the opposition could improve because it was quite an extreme bill so these are high vps but they're tough to get through and they're also might actually um compromise your position cross-party bills are easier but they don't get you very much as a benefit other than you to stay in the game so uh you do the bill selection three out of those six throw the other three away 
uh, just discard them and they're here uh, okay once you've done that you go to action turns the opposition leader goes first he has his cubes and he will uh, do actions dependent on his clockwork opposition leader card here so if we look at it in detail here you've got uh, three columns so the first so it goes first second and third he uh, currently has two cubes available so ignore the third because that's the third cube so it's first cube second cube so on the first cube you've got a priority top to bottom of what he's going to do uh, and these are the actions so minus 20 there would be uh, attempting to reduce uh, a bill uh, a bill support on this track by 20 um, that's a campaign so that's one of these that's L which is liberals so that will increase uh, the the liberal support uh, and then there's a uh, supporter you uh, pick a supporter card uh, as well second one is almost the same except Ireland in the middle you'll do the first one that's what's known as not futile so futile is an action you do and it doesn't really mean anything or it's not relevant um, in which case you'd move down the track uh, relevance is also uh, subject to this which is known as the attack range so when you've got these uh, these vote changes on these bills um, they it will only be picked if the bill's current uh, vote which is subject to whatever the government MPs are plus these tracks um, whether that's within the range of 300 to 370 votes. So if something's got 380 votes at the moment, it won't bother. If it's got less than 300, it won't bother. Um, so that's the criteria for these. Um, for these uh, campaign moves, if it can't go further up or further down on the track, then there's no point in it doing that's futility. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's his actions, and then it turns to our actions. But the first thing we do is we pull an event card. Events, dear boy, events. Uh, and the event uh, essentially says something has happened. Uh, it's usually bad, uh, almost universally bad. And we can dedicate cubes to try and um, make it not so bad or even make it good. Uh, so you've got some choices on the card. When we go through the game, I'll go through the cards rather than you know turn them over and stuff because you'll just forget about them. Uh, as we go through the game, you'll get these. So uh, events, we pull the event out and then see if we want to dedicate, dedicate any of our cubes. We've got three to start off with uh, on that card. If not, we can do our actions. And we have our five actions available, but only four are actually available because Sir Robert Peel has one missing, which is flatter. So we, can, we can't do the flatter one, but we can do campaign debate, hobnob and influence. And you just place your marker on which one of those and do the thing. There's a level one effect and a level two effect. Um, so Robert Peel is uh, a campaign level two. So uh, if he did a campaign, he would be on a level two effect. Everything else other than flatter, he would be on a level one effect. Right. Uh, once that's done, uh, you've done your bit. Then you have to resolve one of the bills. Uh, so the resolution, the first decision is, do you withdraw the bill? Do you say, I'm not going to win it. I'll just throw it in the bin which is a cheap loss, if you like. Uh, so you will, you will lose, um, you'll lose standing uh, and there'll be victory points involved for the opposition, but it's not as bad as if uh, you actually, uh, if the bill actually failed. So it, it's kind of an admission of defeat. Uh, or you can resolve a bill and it either f fails or succeeds. If it's uh, 350, votes or more then it will automatically pass uh, if it is uh, I think it's uh, 310 or less or 320 or less I think 310 I think 310 or less it'll automatically fail um, because if it's within that range you pick an uncertainty card and this uncertainty card just gives you a value between uh, I think it's 1 and 10 which you add or subtract from the votes so there's there's a there's an unknown element within that if it's a close run thing you might actually lose even though it looks like you're going to win once you do the bill uh and you resolve the act, uh, the the activities from that you then go to the challenge phase so uh first thing we do we could sack Sir Robert Peel and we could appoint Marcus of Salisbury if we wanted to 
Uh, we can only do that once in the game. He can't, you know, he, he can't that. Um, high crossing, who's winning? We haven't actually started yet. I'm still explaining the game. So you've joined just at the uh, right time, although you don't know what the hell I'll be doing. But you'll kind of pick it up on, on the way. Uh, or what you'll have to anyway. Um, so that's, uh, we have this bit. This is the only version of the game that gives you that ability to sack your leader and put in a new guy. Then the opposition leader may challenge. So a challenge may uh, be of two things. So if he is equal standing with you and he has more favour than you, he can replace you. And that's the end of the game. Uh, if he has more standing than you, then he can replace you. And that's the end of the game. So st being higher in standing than your position is absolutely crucial in this. Uh, so it can come to an abrupt halt. So that's the challenge uh, there. Finally, then, you decide if you need to hold an election. You only hold an election if, you, if you've got rid of all the three bills. They've been resolved. Possibility of an election. But you can use the election marker to delay it another three turns. And then you will, of course, put uh, three new bills out. You'll, pick, you'll draw six, pick three, and carry through again. But if this marker is not there, when you get to this point on the third turn, and there's no more bills here, then you have to hold a general election. And when you hold a general election, you look at this marker. So as these tracks go up and down, they will add either one, two, or three uh, projected votes on here. And you'll use this uh, these uh, these numbers here to move one of the markers on and then if they come back down you may move the other marker so there's a swing here uh, and this is the projected number of votes that you will get in a general election so you do hold the general election and you look at that marker plus of course you pull an uncertainty card and the second part of the card is about how many vote swings which was unexpected so this is your poll if you like but when you actually count the votes, it's going to be slightly different. And the uncertainty card will tell you what that's going to be. Um, if you hold an election and lose, you've lost the game. You're no longer prime minister. So there you go. Um, if there's no hold election, you go back to the beginning, get your VPs, um, you know, sort out the bills if you need to, um, if there aren't already bills there. Opposite actions, PM's event, then actions, resolve the bill, challenge, possibly hold an election, start again. And that's the whole whole turn, and you keep going on that. A bit, you know, kind of got a process here. So let's get on with this, shall we? Um, enough enough talking. I'm starting to go a bit hoarse. Um, good, so we start with our, our Robert Peel here. We start on the round. Uh, we don't get our, our VPs for the start of the, uh, of, of the game. On the first turn, we take our action cube income. So the opposition leader has two cubes. We have three to play with. Bill selection. So, this, so at the start, I'm going to pick six cross-party bills. I'm not going to bother picking a conservative bill because it's just too tough at the moment. My partisans are currently on 60. So to need to get 330 votes, if I have a, a conservative bill which needs partisans, then... Yeah, I've got no chance of uh, of actually passing that bill. So there's no point in picking the Conservative bills at the moment. So let's switch them over and see what we have. Oops. So we have the Tramways Act, an act to facilitate the construction of tramways, uh, which is, you know, trams, yeah, um, sort of you know, like trains on, on a road kind of thing. So uh, this is three victory points, but for both sides. Um, this is a vote, depends on the moderates, with a plus 30 bonus. So our moderates is currently 270. Plus 30 would give us 300 votes to start off with. Not bad, but we need 30 extra votes to pass this from our current situation. Elementary Education Act. Uh, same thing here, moderates votes, but we don't get the plus 30, so it would be at 270 to start off with. That's a toughie. Still three votes for uh, three VPs for each side. Uh, the Merchant Shipping Act, this is for all uh, MPs, so this is our 330, they'll all vote for it, plus 20. So we'd be currently at 350 votes, and that would be an automatic win. So that's only two victory points, and you don't get any bonuses from it. So it's it's kind of, a, a, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a time ticker, 
uh, it just goes on because uh, we get, both get a bonus out of it, me and the and the bot. But at least it's easy to pass. Here we have the Dwellings Improvement Act, an act to clear slums. This is moderates plus 20, so we'd be on 290. Hmm. Three victory points. The University Scotland Act. This is all MPs, so that's 330, but minus 20 to start with, be on 310. There's uh, two victory points, but we do get a, a decent bonus here, maybe. And then finally, we have the Copyright Act, an act to extend copyright protection. It's another one of these uh, these, uh, these time fillers here. No bonus, two victory points each, but it's an easy one. It's all MPs plus 30. So that's kind of what I'm looking for at the moment is just to be able to get through without uh, without getting a, a bill defeated here. So I'm certainly going to go with that. Um, I certainly might go with the Merchant Shipping Act because that's an easy one. Uh, and I think the next easy one is the Tramways Act here. So I'm going to go with those three. I'll discard the other ones because they're just too hard. And that's kind of what we what we need to focus on at the start of the game. So Tramways Act, Merchant Shipping Act and the Copyright Act. These are the ones to go for. So that's bill selection done. On to the action turns. Opposition leader goes first. So his first cube on his track. So his first uh, thing he wants to do is to do a minus 20 votes on one of these bills. Uh, because these got a bonuses on, we mark them on the track here. So this is plus 30, this is plus 20, and this is plus 30. Okay. So the easiest one is this one, the Copyright Act, followed by that, followed by that. So the first thing you check is the attack range. So he'll only uh, affect the vote on something that has a vote between 300 and 370. So currently the Tramways Act here is moderates, which is 270 plus 30. So he's on 300. So it is within the, tra uh, the, the attack range. This is 330 plus 20. So it's 350. It's in the attack range. And this is three, uh, 330 plus 30, 360. So they're all in the attack range. As preference, it will always attack the weakest one, which is the Tramways Act here. So he is going to reduce the votes on it by 20. So it'll go from plus 30 to plus 10. So currently, the votes on that would be 270 moderates plus 10 other people. So that wouldn't pass. Okay, but that's his that's his first action. Second action cube, uh, he will try and do it again. So looking at these. Um, this is now uh, moderates 270 plus 10. So uh, that's less than his 300 attack range. So he thinks he's he's got that sorted. So he's not going to affect this. He's going to affect the, affect the next weakest one. The next weakest one is this one. So he's going to reduce that by 20. Quite savage, actually. 20 is quite a, quite a thing. Um, he's a, he's a, hell of a hell of a debater. That's his two cubes. He doesn't get the third one until he gets eight standing. He's on five. So that's his turn done. Then it's over to our turn. The first thing we do is we pick an event. Oh, let's put the inaction marker back. Uh, the event is coal miners go on strike. So I've got three options. I can ignore this. If I ignore the coal miners, uh, then my gentry uh, number will go down. My middle class will go down. And my workers will go down. I would lose one, two, three, four, five. I would lose five votes. That would put the orange marker on there for the next election. Now, the next election is, you know, cut at least you know, three turns away. Um, but that's quite a lot to lose. That's five, five, uh, five projections to lose. Um, if I dedicate one to it to denounce the coal miners, uh, to do the, the coal miners, I will lose two on the workers. So I will go from three to one. That's only two spots. That's probably worth doing. Um, or I could put two of my three counters on here and uh, there is no effect. Um, I'm not really up with the workers much. I'm a, I'm a Tory prime minister here. So uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to just put one cube on that, which means the workers... Votes goes down to one from three, uh, so which means the Liberals are up two. But at least I've dealt with it now. 
So now I can do my turn proper. And so we've got the two two uh, two cubes here. What do we want to do? So firstly, we want to pass one of these bills. Um, now again, these are kind of time servers here. Uh, but at the moment, this is scraping it. And uh, but this isn't. So if we want to focus on something with campaigning, uh, with sorry, with um, debating, then we'll want to focus on these two. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do much about this one now that he's kind of sabotaged it with his minus 20. I don't think we have the time, but we do want to pop, uh, prop this one up. So we will use a cube on to debate. He has a level one debate, so he can add, add or subtract plus, uh, 10. So we'll add 10 to it. Um, and then the second one, so uh, other things, we, we can't do flatter. We could campaign and we could try and repair the, what uh, how the workers are upset with us. Uh, we could do another debate, so help it a bit more. And mm, Or we could hobnob and we could get a supporter and maybe that will help us. Um, I'm going to be chick. Uh, so currently we'd probably be looking at um, doing this bill rather than even though this one is the most popular um, because we don't want Gladstone to be coming back and reducing it even further. Uh, so currently we'd be on 340. So within the range we need to uh, do an uncertainty card, but that's that's okay. I think we'll take the risk for the moment. If the, if the game is, is going to turn on me that quickly, then, you know, what the hell can you do? Um, I think we will hobnob. So we will take a supporter card. And what supporter card do we have? We have Sarah Forbes Benetta is the goddaughter of Her Majesty, the Queen. So these, she's useful because uh, she can either improve our favour by one. Remember, Robert uh, uh, Peel and Salisbury can't actually do any flattery but we can do we can get her to do it on our behalf so we can gain a favor and go up the chart or we can force the liberals to go down too so that might be good to stick in the back pocket we'll keep that and later on that might be useful just to make sure that the favor doesn't get away with us although to be honest gladstone doesn't do a lot on his uh, his actions which have anything to do with favor i don't think uh, the queen likes him much at all um so, but um, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep it for the moment. Uh, I think we'll keep it for the moment. So that's our three actions done. Um, so now we go on to resolving a bill. So we're going to pick the Merchant Shipping Act here. Currently, it's on three hundred and thirty votes for all government MPs plus twenty others. Um, oh, that's that's a three hundred and fifty. It's on three hundred and fifty. Uh, no, sorry, it's plus 10, not plus 20. So it's on 340. 340 will win by 10, but we need to pick an uncertainty card to make sure that the votes go as we predict. So with our uncertainty card, we turn it over, and it's a zero. So we were spot on. It's 340. So, yep, that bill passed. Phew. Uh, got through, and now we have... Um, we get the uncertainty... We actually shuffle the uncertainty every every time we pick from it. Um, we get, uh, I don't think there were any rewards on there other than the VPs. And the VPs were uh, two each. So no big deal, really. It's a fairly minor thing. So we got by two, but the opposition also got by two. Uh, that's the bill done. Challenge. So standing is too low for Gladstone to challenge us, so that doesn't happen. We don't need to hold an election because we've still got bills out here. Next turn. Start of the turn, we add VP. So we get four VPs, one, two, three, four, and they get two. So we're on six, they're on eight, so we're starting to catch up. So over time, we will in overall haul the opposition leader, un you know, unless things go bad. Uh, cube income. So we get the cubes ready. Uh, back in position uh, and then uh, we don't need any bill selection we have bills so action turns the opposition leader goes first and of course he's big on debate here minus 20 uh, so a minus 20 on one of these bills 
So what do we got on range here? So this is currently 330 plus 30, 360 within range. This is moderates. This is 270 plus 10. This is 280. That's not within. He doesn't care about this one. He's going to win it. He's happy. This one he's going to affect. So he's going to pull 20 votes off that with his debate. Second cube. Um, we are now on. Uh, 330 plus 10, 340, still within his range. So his first priority is debate. So he's going to do the same thing again. So now we're on minus 10. So currently we're on 320 votes. Great. Thanks, Gladstone. That's his turn done. He's got his two cubes over to me with my three cubes. But of course, events, dear boy. Let's see what's going on in the country. It's a by-election. So a by-election is kind of a little mini VP count here. So you look at the current projection. So what a by-election is, is uh, one of the MPs has either died or been taken ill and can't serve or something's out, he's resigned. And so there's a mini election in his constituency. Uh, so all the other MPs stay as they were, but who's going to win this particular little election? Um, so uh, we look at the projection here and we say, well, uh, if this is, uh, if the number here for the Liberals, which is 333, is bigger than our number, 330, which it is, then our PM loses a standing. We lost the by-election. So whoever died, the Liberals won that seat, either back or, again, you know, or instead of one of uh, our MPs. I lose a standing for that, which is very bad. And the opposition gets one victory point. But that's all that happens. That's the event. Maybe I should have been doing some campaigning because Sorbet sort of Peel's very good at this. But at the moment, I'm just trying to fend off Gladstone from ruining these bills. Uh, OK, so uh, that's the event done. Then the good thing about a by-election is uh, it gives us all our, all our cubes to play with. So um, I think I'm, this is going to be lost. I don't think I can do very much with this. Um, because I'm currently on 280, I'll need yeah 280. I'll need 50 more votes to make it make it there. I I can't really do it. So I think I've lost this one. I'll probably withdraw this bill. I should try and boost this one at the Copyright Act. So uh, let's do a double debate here. Two debates. So it pushes it up by. 20, it's now 330, 340. Uh, I'm happy with 340. I'll take the risk on the uncertainty. Um, oops, that's that card's flipped over. Uh, let me know if everybody's following this. If they're not, then I'm not doing my job properly. But um, so uh, this this is the uh, the one we're going to go for this turn. Uh, we got three. 40 victory points, uh, three, 340 votes. So that's done. We've still got a cube to play with. Um, I think we'll hobnob again. Let's see who's got somebody who's useful. The Earl of Idsley, an influential peer. It can give us a plus 10, plus or minus 10, or we can go up with the Conservatives. So that's that's not bad. That can pull back the election projection. So we'll play him and uh, that will be to move the conservatives up from six to eight. So that's plus two on here. So our minus two means that it's now even again. That's cool. Uh, and uh, and that's it. That's all our cubes done. On to resolving a bill. I'm going to try and re resolve the Copyright Act here. We are on all MPs 330 plus 10. So 340, uh, the upper end of the uncertainty, but let's see what pops up. Plus 10. So it was actually 350, so it got through. Brilliant. That's nice. Uh, we got that through. Two victory points each side. There's no bonus to us, though. But at least we got through. Uh, so that goes. And we have plus two VPs for each side. Cool. Second build done. Uh, that's that's just a 
that's just sad i think that one uh we're not going anywhere near that uh cool so is there a challenge there is no challenge he's on five i we're on ten uh and um there's no need to hold an election so round uh set up the round for the new round and uh first thing we do is four vps for me one two three four and two for them so we're really gaining on him now just through the time period of us being a prime minister no need for bill selection we still got a bill here opposite uh get your cubes back cube income and opposition leader goes first and so what's he going to do on his first cube he can do another minus 20 but this is underneath his attack range of 300 to 370 it's too weak he doesn't need to spend his time persuading anybody so he's going to ignore that uh, next thing is to campaign for the liberals so his liberals here are on six they could go to eight i think they will do there's no it's certainly not futile uh, so he's up two again and then the second cube uh, is pretty much the same thing so uh, plus 20 uh, so you can he can reduce this he's not going to bother it's futile because he's going to win it. Uh, so the next thing is to improve Ireland. So he's currently on five, goes up to seven. So he goes up to four. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so they're getting ahead. Uh, but he's done for the turn. Uh, it's our turn. But what do we do? An event, dear boy. Revolution in France. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So, if we ignore it, the gentry go down by two. So, we'd go from five to one. If we denounce, they go down by one. If we arrange asylum for the ex-monarch, it will go up by one. But it's two cubes. Well, the debate thing is by the by. Um, we probably want to be doing some campaigning anyway. So, what we want to do is not for this to affect us. So, I'm going to put two cubes on this which means that the gentry go up by two for us. So we go from five to seven, and that reduces them down to two. So they're leading by two in projections only. Leaves us only with one cube, though. But uh, with that, I think we we will campaign. Now, Robert Peel's got a level two campaign here, so he can go up two spots. Uh, but it has to be either the gentry, Ireland, or the middle class. So gentry, we're currently on seven. Uh, Ireland, we're currently on three, and middle class, we're currently on three. Uh, each of them would be improved by four. Uh, interesting thing is, if we go, uh, sorry, not the farmers, the gentry, uh, we would actually, we would go up by, yeah, four, yeah, they're all four. Uh, interesting enough, though, gentry would give us more, uh, after an election, it would give us more partisans. Do we need more partisans at the moment? Probably not, um, because that would reduce our moderates. And as you know, it's really tough with the moderates at the moment. We need more moderates than partisans. Um, I think we'll go with the middle class. So we'll move that up from three to seven. That gives us a difference of four. One, two back, and then one, two in our favour. So that's great. Good. Okay, that's our turn. That's the good stuff. Bad stuff now. PM resolves a, a bill. So currently we're on 280. There's no chance of this passing. So I'm going to withdraw the bill. So I'm going to say, let's not bother voting on it. What that means is the opposition go up by one standing. I go down by one. So he's now six and I am nine. And also he gains a victory point. I think it's just one victory point. Sorry, no, it's two victory points. You get up two victory points. Good that I checked. Uh, all right. So now we get, do we hold an election? Now, this is interesting because we're ahead, but we're only just ahead. And when we're that close, we will be picking an uncertainty card to see the effect on the election. And remember, if we lose, that's the end of the game. We've lost. So I think we will need to delay the election. So we will delay the election. No, not holding election now. So 
uh, we will go back to the next round, back to the top. So four victory points for me. One, two, three, four. Two for them. Okay, get our cubes back. I still just have the third cube here. What I found is gaining standing in this game is actually quite difficult. Once it starts to drop, it kind of keeps dropping and doesn't go back up. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've uh, done the VPs, taken the cubes back. Bill selection. We have no bills, so we need to look again. And uh, I'll stick with the cross-party ones. One, three, four, five, six. What have we got? We have the Poor Law Scotland Act. Three VPs. Uh, it's moderates plus ten. That's not very good. Uh, the Arsenic Act. Act to regulate the sale of arsenic. Two VPs plus thirty on all. That's very. That's e much easier. The Windsor Castle Act. An act to improve Windsor, Windsor Castle. That's all but a minus thirty. Ooh, that's tough. No, I don't think we'd bother with that. Next. The Food and Drug Act, Act to provide for the sale of food and drugs in a pure state. That's moderate plus 50. Mm. No, that's okay. Yeah, okay-ish. Fifth one. Crofters Holdings, Scotland Act, an act to protect the land rights of Highland Crofters. That's moderate plus 10. Oh, no, we don't want to get anywhere near that one. And finally, Metropolitan Police Act, an act for improving the police in the metropolis. Well, Sir Robert Peel is um, very famous for actually first creating the Metropolitan Police. It's his kind of act. It's an all plus ten only, though. But we do get a reward there. So, but remember, Gladstone is a debate uh, is 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 a is a debate champion here. So we need to be as safe as possible. Uh, certainly, the Arsing Act is happening. That's all. That's three hundred thirty plus. There's three sixty votes in that automatically definitely that um, I don't think we can afford the moderates yet so we'll take those out so it's two of these three well Windsor Castle is tough it's nice but it's much tougher the other two so we're gonna to have to get rid of the Windsor Castle that leaves the Arsenic Act the Paul or Scotland Act and the Metropolitan Police Act as our three bills and not entirely happy with these two that's okay but uh, actually the Paul or Scotland Act is not brilliant yeah no sorry I thought that was an all it's not it's moderates so moderates plus 10 that's terrible so actually the Food and Drug Act which is moderates plus 50 so that might be our target to do first if we can uh, that's plus 30 and this is plus 10 that's oh gosh that's going to be tough to put through. Okay, right. Um, that's our bill selection. Let's discard these. Hope you're all still uh, watching out there and still comprehending. Action turns over to Mr. Gladstone, is two. And of course, he'll start working on these bills. So a minus 20. Uh, so checking the range 300 to 370 uh, this currently is all plus 30 it's 360 he can certainly he was certainly interested in doing something with that moderates plus 50 uh, that's 270 plus 50 uh, which is 320 so yes and all plus 10 uh, so yes that's 340 so the weakest one is this one so he will reduce that by 20 which is just enormous. Uh, then he'll do it again with his second, because it's this, it's top priority for his second cube. So he'll do it again. This is still, this is moderates plus 30. Moderates plus 30 is, uh, is still 300, so just within range. So he'll do it again. It's now plus 10 only. Moderates plus 10 is, well, that's only two, 280. So he's kind of killed this bill in one fell swoop. Wow. Um, so that, but that's him done. Our events, dear boy, is landlords abuse Irish farmers. So if we ignore this, 
we will lose um, we will lose our position with farmers by one and also with Ireland okay and that will that will be four a projection of four change if we consult the Irish peers the farmers will go down but Ireland will be all right if we launch an investigation the farmers would go up uh, okay I want to get our campaigning up here uh, I think I'll use one cube that means the farmers will go down by one so that will end up tied again we're we'll down to three from five with the farmers but a cube for campaigning with Sir Robert Peel is worth more than a cube on here because he gets you know, he gets a double move it's a level two for his campaigning so I think that's that's worth it. So let's honour that. Uh, and first thing we'll do is we'll do a level two campaign. Um, Ireland, gentry or middle class. We can't do the farmers. Uh, Ireland, gentry or middle class. Again, gentry, we're not really that fussed about the the partisans at the moment. So you can put the middle class up from seven to eleven. Or we could put Ireland up from three to seven. It's a move of four. I suspect we'll get more Irish problems. So I'd rather have a buffer up here. So we're going to do Ireland. Level two. So that gives us another four votes. Or four projections. And... Um, what do we do with our last cube? Our last cube. So, what do we like with these two? I'd like to get this one done because we do get a bonus here. So all uh, all plus so that's three hundred and forty. This currently is. Or do we try and just chase chase our tail on the Food and Drug, Drugs Act? Well, currently we're on 280. If we get it to 290, he won't bother with it. But at least we've got possibly within range. Uh, I think it's too much to hope for, I think. So we could hobnob it. I think we will hobnob again. Let's see who, uh, who turns up here. We have Emmeline Pankhurst. So, we have a choice here what she can do. She can boost the Liberals up by one and the Conservatives down by one. So, our Liberal, which is on zero at the moment, will go up. That will be four. But our Conservatives will go down from eight to six. So, it's a change of two. Or, we can force the Liberals to lose one on their Liberal, which is minus two. So, it's plus two to us or minus two for them. Uh, well, actually, if we reduce the Conservatives, uh, that will give us less Radicals, uh, less Partisans, uh, and we boost our Liberals. So that's a change of two. That puts us on six. That's great. We're, we're campaigning well here. So, Emmeline, thank you very much. She's done. That's our cubes. So resolve a bill. So this will pass easily, but this... I think I want to get try and get to this through before Gladstone gets his his debate flamethrower onto it. So this is three forty. So we've got ten votes ten votes cushion here. Let's see what uncertainty does. That's a zero. So it was three forty, it passed. Hurrah. Good. Let's shuffle uncertainty again. So Metropolitan Police Act passes. Hey, Robert Peel. Metropolitan Police Act. There we go. So two VPs each. One, two. Yeah, there was Yeah, you you can you can just get a bad uncertainty card and that's it. You're done for. But that's good. We get up one up for the gentry, so we get another boost. So up to eight. Great. Good, good, good. Uh so Metropolitan Police Act done. 
we don't have a challenge because he's still not as popular as us in Parliament. Uh, not holding election round again. So start of the round, we get four VPs. One, two, three, four. We're on 22. They get two, so they're on 21. We're, we're ahead um, for the first time in the game. Cube income. And back to Gladstone. So Gladstone with his, as I say, his debate flamethrower tactics here. Um, doesn't care about this. This is too weak. He'll start on this guy here. So currently we're on 360. So he'll put a cube. First priority is minus 20. Debate. So that drops it to 10, uh, plus 10. And then he'll put his second cube on the second line. And the first thing, of course, is another minus 20. So again, he will... That's still within his attack range. Cause it's still 340. He'll make it a minus 10 now. So currently we're 330, 320 votes. So we'll actually lose this bill at the moment. And that's the one we're probably going for. Because um, again, we want to get through the bills as quickly as possible before Gladstone ruins them all. This one's dead. There's nothing I can do about that one. But at least this one I can try and get through. On to our turn. Events, dear boy. Cholera outbreak in London. That's going to be brilliant, isn't it? So if I ignore the cholera outbreak, yeah, like I'm going to do that, um, we will go down one on gentry, middle class and workers. Well, workers don't care about because we're on, on the minimum on workers anyway. We can't go back further, but middle class would be down two and gentry would be down two. So that'd be minus four on that. If we put one cube on it, we evacuate Her Majesty from London and we lose just middle class and workers. Now that's... That's reasonable because the workers don't go down because they're on minimum. So we'll only lose two votes. So, yeah, I think I'll... We'll evacuate Her Majesty, but everybody else can go hang. Uh, and we lose on the middle class. But we've got our two action cubes. Two action cubes. Uh, I want to do some campaigning and also want to repair this. So we will do a debate. Take that up to zero. We're on 330. I don't think we can do anything else other than do another debate to put this on to 340. Yeah, I, there's, there's nothing else we can do here. Um, we need to get this through. So, Arsenic Act. That's our three cubes. We're on to resolving a bill. We resolve this. We're on 340 votes at the moment. We need 330. Let's see what the uncertainty is. Everybody cross their fingers. And there we go. Minus 11. So it's 329 votes. It fails. Okay. This is not going this is going to be incredibly painful now. So if the bill fails, we lose two standing. That means we lose a cube. So we're on seven. The opposition leader gains two standing. So they're on eight. So he's he's more popular than I am in Parliament. Also, they get three victory points. One, two, three. This is where this game is going to go all wrong, I'm afraid. Um, right, so. Um, that done. On to the challenge phase. Now, he will challenge me and he will win now. So. <laughs> the only thing I can do to stop losing the game is to actually sack Peel and put Salisbury in. Which is what I'm going to have to do. So Robert Peel goes, you're sacked, sorry mate, and we put Marcus of Salisbury in place. Uh, now when we when we swap them, the standing goes back to where it was before. Let me just check uh, if there's any other effects, but I think it's just the standing. Ah, yes. So, I reset my standing to 11. His stays at 8, and he's got a third cube now. Um, just for note. Uh, I take a 6 VP penalty. So, I go back 6 VPs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I didn't ha want to do this, but it's either that or lose the game. Um, 
and uh, these bills get removed. So the government legislation completely changes. Minus 11, really. You knew it was going to happen, didn't you? <laughs> okay, Marcus of Salisbury, let's see if we can keep things going. Uh, yeah, we only got 16 VPs out of uh, Sir Robert Peel. Um, it's going to be tricky because we we've got we haven't got the power of debate that Gladstone has. That's a problem. It's going to be so difficult. We're on a bit of a slide now. Yeah, it's just like I do to to, to rough. Yeah, that's right. I just uh, elbow him out of the way. Just like yeah, sack him out of the way. Indeed. Okay, so challenge phrase done. So what do we next need to do? There are no bills left on the board, so we go to hold an election. So uh, we have to deal with this now. Um, so we currently, uh, we are going to get 340 seats and the Liberals will get 318. So we now pick an uncertainty card to see how much that changes. So it's a minus four. So we go back one, two, three, four. So we get to 333 to 325. We round to nearest. So we win the election, but we're just still on 330. Because we round down from 333. So nothing's changed. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I thought we would. But anyway. Well, according to the Blue Tweezers uncertainty principle. We didn't do as well as we thought we were going to do. That's the electorate for you. Um, right. Uh, okay. So we check our moderates and partisans. So currently we have 60. We just have 60. So in fact, it's identical to what it was before. So no, the markers have moved. That's our election done. Uh, we put this marker back. And we set up for the round for the next round. So first thing we get four VPs, one, two, three, four, they get two. Bill selection. We've got no bills here. We have to put out some more bills. One, two, three, four, five, six. The Public Health Ireland Act, moderates plus 30. That's 300, that's not very good. The Public Health Act. Moderates plus 40. Mm -hmm. Commonwealth of Australia Act. Act to constitute the Commonwealth of Australia. So we make Australia in, in, into a dominion. Excellent. Um, that's all. So that's better. The Lunacy Act. Moderates plus 50. Okay. That's... Hmm, okay. That's the second best so far. Mines and Collieries Act, an act to ban children under 10 from working in coal mines. Well, you can't really go for that, haven't you? That's, that's an all minus 10. Mm. And then we have the Employers and Workmen Act, an act to enable workers to sue employers for breach of contract. Moderates only. So that's the weakest one, so we're definitely not going to do that. Bigger award, but no chance, not with Gladstone around. Um... The best one, moderates plus 50 is 320. So Commonwealth Australia Act is the best one. Next best is the Lunacy and the Mines and Collieries. Yeah. So Public Health Island and Public Health Act, they have to go. Not interested in public health, I'm afraid. Okay, I I don't think this game has got much longer to go on. <laughs> let's see, let's see if we can rescue it a bit. Okay, um, bills done. Action, opp opposition leader. Let's uh, get this debate machine going again. Um, attack range of three hundred to three seventy. Uh, this is three twenty, so that's in. This is three twenty, that's in. This is three thirty, that's in. 
So 320 are these two. So there's a tie break. Because these are equally weak or strong, um, there is a tiebreaker um, order. So we look firstly at the VPs. Lunacy gives you three VPs. Mines and Colleagues gives you two. So this is the one he'll pick on because it's the more valuable card. So he will do, of course, his normal minus 20. Uh, that was on plus 50, wasn't it? Uh, uh, minus 10. I didn't put, do these markers, did I? So on plus 50, he's going to do a minus 20, so down to 30. We're now on moderates plus 30, which is uh, still 300. Uh, the next one, he'll do exactly the same thing. And 300 is still within his range, so he's going to do it again. That's going to be, it's going to be moderates plus 10, so that's 280. So he's, again, ruined this bill. But he's now got a third cube because he's got standing of eight. So what does he do? Well, of course, you know what he does. He's going to try and ruin another bill. This is now 280, so it's below his attack range. He doesn't care. He thinks he's won it. So the next one, of course, is minus and collieries. It's on 330 minus 10, all MPs minus 10, so 320. And he's going to make it down to 300. Yeah, um, yeah, we're going to really suffer here, aren't we? Okay, that's his turn done. Uh, for our turn, events, dear boy. Flooding in the Midlands. If I ignore the farmers drop by two, they can only drop by one. I can quote the Bible, so the farmers only drop by one. That's no better. If I tour the disaster area with two tokens, the farmers go up by one. I, I can't afford to spend time on this. So I'm afraid the farmers are going to go down by two. Um, sorry, these are tied now. So that means the liberals are up by two. And there's no, I, I need the cubes to do things here. So what's going to pass here? So this is 3.30. Now, the level 2 thing that Marcus Salisbury does is influence. So influence is varying the moderates and partisans. Now the thing is, these two are all MPs, so that doesn't really help those, but it does help this one. I have three cubes. So I could try and get this one through here. Yeah, so if I put um, three cubes onto influence, that means that will drop, the partisans will drop by 60. So this will drop to zero, and that will go up by 60. So this will go up to 330. So everybody's a moderate at the moment in my party. Now this is plus 10. So therefore that would be 330. That would be 340 for this guy. Hmm. Cole, hello. Well, it's worth a try. I think it's worth a try. 340 votes for that. Used my cubes. So let's get on with resolving a bill. So 340 on here. Let's get our uncertainty here. And the uncertainty is minus 1. So it went to 329. That's uh, 3, uh, 339, which still passes. So the Lunacy Act passes. 3 VPs each. And we get to select two supporters as a reward and keep one of them prime viewing for prime minister eh Cole prime viewing for prime minister lunacy act done uh, let's have two supporters and I will keep the one I want what have we got we have CP Scott newspaper publisher and David Livingston the explorer so C.P. Scott gives me plus 10 
plus or minus 10 on a vote for a bill or 10 on an influence. Now, David Livingston gives me plus one to Scotland or plus one to the workers. Well, neither of those are very good. They only give me one vote each. Actually, they're both they're both a bit rubbish, to be honest. The plus 10, I suppose, may help at some point. So we're going to keep C.P. Scott in our hand with Sarah Forbes Benetta. David Livingston can go back to Scotland. Sorry, mate, not interested. Okay. Um, right. So that's our result a bit. Challenge. He's on 8, I'm on 11, so he's not going to challenge me. Uh, we don't need to hold an election because we have bills to pass. So we're on to the next round. Four VPs to me. One, two, three, four. Two to him. Uh, get our cubes back. Oh, I've got three cubes for the opposition. Bill selection, we've got our bills. Opposition leader attack. So, okay, first cube, minus 20 votes on a bill. What's the weakest? We have all minus 30 here. So that comes out as 300. Yes, that's the weakest. Um, it's still just within his range, so he's going to dump on that one. Second cube, minus 20 again. This is now 330 minus 50, 280. So it's too weak for him to bother talking about anymore. He's going to have a go at this guy. So that will drop by 20. So that's now on 310. And finally, his third cube, guess what? He does exactly the same thing again. Minus 40. Gosh. Okay. Um, yeah, he just ruined both the bills. Brilliant. Events, dear boy. Mail disaster in Scotland. So if I ignore, Scotland goes down by two. If I offer a prayer, goes down by one. If I support new regulations with two cubes, Scotland goes up by one. I'm going to ignore. That drops by one. This goes up by one. Hmm. Need those cubes. Can we get anything on these? So this is on 290. This one is on uh, 280. So this guy's on 290, which means that it's safe for me axed. And if I presume this one is going to die, I can dedicate my cubes next turn, maybe, to try and restore this one. Because if I if I if I increase the votes on, he's just going to come back and just crush me again with the debate. So if I can keep it at two ninety, he won't bother. He'll go off on holiday or something. Well, he'll do other. He'll go campaigning instead. So maybe I don't do any debating at all here. Um, I could campaign. Uh, best places to campaign would be well they're worth two votes each uh, Salisbury can do the Conservatives the Farmers all Ireland Farmers is terrible so yes let's campaign level one so that comes up by two You know what, I think we might do two hobnobs. Hobnob one. Duke of Devonshire. Conservatives up two, Ireland down one, or minus one standing for the opposition. That'll do. Influential peer, Duke of Devonshire. I like that. That's great. Yeah, Duke of Devonshire, minus one standing, which means he loses a cube. Great. Love it. Thanks, Duke of Devonshire. And the second hobnob. Let's see who we get. Thackeray. William Thackeray, the author. 
Yeah, the opposition down one on liberals or down one on farmers. Well, either one will be nice. Let's drop them on farmers, I think. Drop it on farmers, down by two, which means I'm just squeaking ahead on projections. Cheers, William. Okay. I've still got these guys I can play, but I don't think I need to yet. Let's see how let's see what it looks like next turn, I think. We're gonna to have to withdraw one of these. So I think we'll do the 280. We'll withdraw this bill. Mines and Collieries Act, I'm unfortunately have to go in the bin because Mr. Gladstone has spoken. Uh this means that checking uh minus one standing for me, down to ten, plus one for the opposition, up to eight. He gets his cube back. Mm -hmm. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. Uh, and he gets two VPs. Mm. This is not working out. Okay. No challenge. He's on eight and I'm on ten. Uh, no election to hold. Next round, four VPs to me. Two VPs there. Our cubes, he gets his third one back. I get my three back. And he has his go. Um, so, first cube. Uh, this is 290, so it's below his attack range, 300 to 370. So, therefore, he's going to ignore that and go for his second choice, which is improve the liberals. So, that goes up by three. Ouch. Second cube, again, ignore the bill, go campaigning in Ireland. Ireland will make him go to another two, so that's up to four. And then finally, third one, again, will ignore the bill, use workers. The workers go from five to seven, so that's up another two. <sighs> right, okay. Events, dear boy. Right, Prince of Wales caught in scandal. If I ignore, then the favour goes down by one and middle class goes down by one. If I advise Her Majesty, only the middle class go down. And if I shift blame, the opposition gets minus one favour. Pretty sure I need to try and guess this guy through. We're currently on 290. They have a chance we need to get to 330. So we need to increase by 40. CP Scott will give me 10, and 3 cubes will give me another 30. So I I have to just ignore this to keep going. So, um, yeah, Queen hates me. And so do the middle class. So he goes up to eight. None of this is looking good. We're behind on the projections. Right, my turn to try and get this bill through. We'll do three debates. 10, 20, 30. And CP Scott, I'll play. And that's another 10. So we're on 330. This might not even get through. Maybe I'll maybe I should have just taken the hit. You know what? Maybe I will just take the hit. Because it's only for a 50-50, and that's using all cubes to do that. I'll just have to take the hit on that. I don't think Commonwealth Australia is coming through, I'm afraid. So let's try and repair this because we've got an election straight after. So our campaign is Conservatives, Farmers or Ireland. So I can do a campaign level one 
on the conservatives, which is me another two. Then I do the same again. That it gives me another three up to eleven. And then I do the third. I do the same thing. Push it through the conservatives. So that gives me another three, which puts us on a tie. C.P. Scott can't help. Sarah Forbes uh, might be relevant, actually. Because he could challenge me if if that... No. Uh, just have to do it. So we'll use Sarah Falls Bonetta and put us up to one, so at least neck and neck. His half standing is 10, his is 8. This ain't going to work. I'm going to lose here. Nordic, hello! Good to see you. Sorry, I wasn't uh, looking at the chat. I don't think, I think I'm going to lose either way here. Because he's going to challenge me. And I can't do anything about it. Now, judge's life. So, resolving a bill. This is in the toilet. I'm withdrawing it. Withdrawal means that I lose a standing. He gains a standing. And he gains two VPs. But, that's all well and good. But... Then on the challenge, okay, he has the same standing as me, and he has the same standing in favour. So, Ah, I think I've just got past it. So he has the same standing as me. If he had greater favour, he could challenge me and the Queen would get rid of me. But as we've got the same favour, it means she won't get rid of me. So this is by the skin of my teeth. Nordy says, if you're playing against yourself... Do you ever truly lose? Well, you're up against Gladstone. You feel like you're bloody losing. I'll tell you that much. Um, I'm, I might be able to go on for one more round. Yes. So he can't. He hasn't challenged me. Um, but I need to hold an election. Or use the marker. I've got to use the marker. Because it's a toss-up. He's going to win. So no election. Next turn. Four VPs for me. Two for him. Cubes. I think the Marquess of Salisbury has just about run out of steam here. Bill selection. Let's find some good news, shall we? So let's see what Bill's Gladstone can ruin. Cruelty to Animals Act. An act to prevent cruelty to animals, of course. That's all plus 10. That's nice. Dogs Act. Oh, we're really into animals this time. An act to provide further protection against stray and dangerous dogs. That's an all plus 20, so that's nice, but there's no reward. But at least it's popular. Get out fighting. <laughs> Marcus of Queen Yeah, unfortunately this is the Marcus of Salisbury, not the Marcus of Queensbury. But uh, I approve the sentiment. Poor Law Island Act. This is Moderates. Well, they're on 3.30 anyway. But it's still not as good as the other two. Interpretation Act. An act for shortening the language used in Acts of Parliament. Oof. I get a plus one standing out of that. Mm, but it's all minus 30. So that's 300. It's not, not very likely. Not with... Not with mutton chops... Gladstone around. Libel Act. An act for more effectual remedies against defamatory words. 
that's uh, that's on 3.30 at the moment. And finally we have the Oxford University Act, an act to improve the government of the University of Oxford. So that's all minus 10. Okay, so Poor Law Island Act is... Uh, no. The worst one is the Interpretation Act. Although I love the reward, it's plus one standing for me, all minus 30 is just no chance. Um, A plus 20, all plus 20 is the best, so let's go with that. The next one is the cruelty animals, all plus 10, go with that. And then we've got moderates, or all, which is basically the same, or all minus 10. So let's go with the Poor Law Island Act, because that's better rewards, but that's an assumption that I'll get anywhere near actually being able to pass that. That's not going to happen. So we're on all plus 20. We're on all plus 10. God, there's no chance. And this is moderates on zero. Our moderates and all is the same. Um, remember, we still have CP Scott at least. Maybe help us out. But anyway, that's the bill selection. Opposite, opposition leader starts Gladstone. Let's, he's going to start chomping on these bills. So weakest one is, of course, this one. So he'll drop it by 20. Down to 310. Uh, second Q will do the same thing again. Still weak, still within his attack range, so it's now minus 40. And then the third cube, uh, this is now too weak. So he'll start on this one, drop that to minus 10. Okay, so the Paul Law Island Act is just dead. Um, anyway, that's his turn. Over to me, events, dear boy. Irony of politicians wanting to shorten their speeches, yes. Okay, it's Derby Day. If I skip Derby Day, I lose some gentry. If I dedicate a cube, I put my best hat on and bet five five pounds. Five pounds, bloody hell, that's quite a bit. I go up with the gentry. Well, that's two votes. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere, anywhere near the uh, the next election. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to skip it. I've got too much work to do in Parliament, I'm afraid, for Derby. So that means the Liberals are up too. OK. So we've got, what are we going to do? So with this one, it's minus 40 that's 290 best I can get is another 40 it gives us 330 for this guy hmm certainly I can possibly get cruelty to animals done so I'll put two Two debate cubes on. That puts us on plus 10. That gives us 340 for this guy to go. I'll just have to let that one ride for the moment. And then once that pass, Gladstone will start having to go with this bloke. But at least it's it's got a little bit of protection. Not much though. Um, and we've got one more cube. We could campaign. Yeah, it's kind of 1840s, 1850s. There's, there's no, there's no particular absolute hard date here, so it's during that sort of mid-Victorian period, uh, up to late. I mean, into the 1870s and stuff. We've got Disraeli here as well, so somewhere in in the sort of mid mid 19th century. There's no, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really give us a year. Last cube. So I can, I can campaign for the Conservatives gives me another three it puts me in in the lead but the election is not the big deal at the moment um, a 
The partisans on the floor say influence doesn't help. I mean, I could do another debate and make sure that this gets through. We're currently on 340. If I put another debate, it'll automatically pass. Fair enough. Let's do it. Or I could use CP Scott to do that and still... Yeah, let's use CP Scott to make sure of the... It gives us a plus 10. So we're on plus 20 there. And then we'll hop up with the other one. Let's get a replacement of CP Scott. Who do we get? John Stuart Mill. Oh, ooh, plus or minus 20. That's a good chap. That's a good chap. Yes, like him. Like him. I'll lose some conservatives. John Stuart Mill, the philosopher. Um, but that minus 20 possibility is great. Love it. Well, I mean, in the circumstances, it might just keep my head above water briefly. Good. Uh, that's my cubes. We're on to uh, resolving a bill. So we will resolve this one. Uh, which is um, on 350. Yeah, 330 for all MPs, plus 20. 350, there's no uncertainty. It passes. Thank you very much. Um, I, lose, I lose some farmers on this, actually. It's not a very good card, that. Uh, that one, never mind. Um, two VPs each. And... Uh, my farmers go down. But I get two supporters cards and get to keep one. Uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson. Which gives me gentry up. Or plus one favour. Or the Duke of Westminster, a wealthy peer. Gives me plus one standing or the conservatives up. Plus one standing would probably be going to be useful. I'll have the Duke of Westminster, thank you. Lord Alfred Lord Tennyson can uh, wander lonely as a cloud. Sorry, off you go. Uh, cruelty Animals is done. So, challenge. Almost, but not quite again. Still the same favour. Uh, I could have used Tennyson to give me plus one uh, to make sure, but... I'm on a knife edge just about everywhere here, so what's the pro what's the point? Um if there's no challenge. Don't need to hold an election. Next round. One, two, three, four, one, two. Catching up again. Though I'm not sure I'm gonna get stay as close. Uh no need to build select bills, we've got two action turns. Our debate blowtorch from Gladstone comes in. Uh, so minus 20. Uh, this is too weak, so he'll turn his attention to this one. So he will do a minus 20 on him. Two, which means we are now on 330, still within his range. So his second act, which is the priority is minus 20, he'll do that again, which means this is now 310. And guess what? The third one, he's going to do exactly the same thing. Just completely trash. The Dog's Act. Turn it into uh, a load of poo. Um, dog poo. This is the Dog's Act. Um, okay. So, what are we going to do? We are going to look at events, dear boy. Crop failure. Oh, that sounds brilliant. Well... If we ignore the farmers go down, well, the farmers are at rock bottom anyway. They hate me. So I don't care. If I dedicate a cube, they'll like me. No, not interested. Sorry. Bottomed out. They, they already hate me. You can just keep on hating me. Right. Uh, my actions. So, Dogs Act, Poor Law Act. Dogs Act is... Pull or act, we're currently on minus 40. We're, they're both as bad as each other. Not popular with the agrarian members of the Empire. Not really, no. No, no. Not popular with most people. Eh? Conservatives like me, of course. Farmers hate me. Gentry quite like me. Ireland, I'm not as liked as the Liberals, but I'm, they're not terrible. 
uh, the Liberals I've got a decent uh, thing with. Um, middle class on starting value. Scotland hate me and the workers hate me. So there you go. That's the uh, that's the roundup of uh, of the voters. So um, right, what were we doing here? What were we doing here? So uh, yeah, these are on two eighty each, two uh, two ninety each. So I can bump one of these up and then attempt to pass it. This is the more valuable one, so we're going to go for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend at John Stuart Mill. And he gives me plus 20 votes on a bill, but it drops the Conservatives, so I go down by three. But uh, this one goes up 20. It's a good start. So now we're on 330, 310. Uh, I will spend the Duke of Westminster as well to give me another standing. So give me a little bit of a buffer here. This is going to be close. So three cubes on debate to get this through. I suppose I'll have to. So it's plus 30. One, two, three. We're on plus 10. So we're on 340 here. But that's all I can do for this. So uh, Jessa doesn't hate me. Well, thank you for that. Yes. I'll uh, I'll print that out and put that up on my wall. Jester doesn't hate me, um, but the rest of the country does. So, uh, where are we? Poor law, Ireland Act. Yes, um, plus ten on three hundred and forty. We're in the uncertainty period, so let's pick a card, and it's minus one. So, three forty goes down to three uh, three thirty nine. We win. It's bigger than 329, so that'll do. Um, we get... Yeah, I know. I'll hold it. I'll hold him to it. Although he can always change his mind, so it's, you know... But at least we have an historical record. Okay, Paul Law Island Act passes. Three VPs each. I haven't even got halfway yet. 50 is halfway. I'm currently on 44. Right. Uh, so Ireland and the workers go up by two. So Ireland goes from seven to 11. So that's four. One, two, three, four. And workers go up by two, goes to three from one. So that's another two. Hmm. It's not quite tied, but it's improved things a bit. Paul Law Island Act. Well, there you go. But that took a hell of a lot of effort to do that. And the Dogs Act is, well, I'm afraid it's in the uh, it's in the doghouse. Ireland seems to like me. Absolutely now. Yes, they uh, they're they're um, they're big on big on uh, big on the conser big on the Conservatives. Which is strange, but there you go. The influence of the peers, maybe. But yeah, well, I've just the Paul Law Island. I mean, what was it? Uh, what does it do? Act for the more effectual of relief to the destitute poor in Ireland. So we're helping poor people in Ireland. So, you know, um, there's uh, government assistance there. So let's uh, presume they will like me. Right, right. Uh, it still doesn't make up for <laughs> some of the other sections. Um, uh, OK, uh, where are we at now? So we resolved a bill. Challenge. Uh, he's not going to challenge. He's on nine. I'm on ten. That's good. Uh, hold election? No. We've still got a bill, even though it's in the doghouse. Next turn. One, two, three, four. VPs up. Two up for them. So we're neck and neck. Cube income. Now, as this is so weak, Gladstone hasn't got any targets to uh, talk it all out. So he's going to go for his secondary priority. So his first cube priority is reduced, but he's not going to bother. So he improves the Liberals. So he goes from 11 to 14 there, which goes 1, 2, 3, up there. Next one, again, still ignores the Dogs Act, so he improves Ireland. Ireland goes up by 1, which is 2. 
and finally third again doesn't care about the bills so goes for the workers oops that was the workers I moved there didn't it Ireland same difference but. and now the workers so that does go up that's another two so he's on plus eight at the moment yeah um, my turn events events dear boy the king of Belgium visits great if I ignore my uh, my favour goes down by one. If I dedicate a cube, it, his goes down by one. Well, I'm just about to trash this, so my standing is going to go down. So if my standing goes down to nine, his will go up to ten, he'll win anyway. doesn't really matter what the favour is. Yeah, it, it's irrelevant now. It's irrelevant. I'm just going to this is this is I'm afraid the end of the game uh, pretty much game over now so my cubes so the best I can do is three cubes which is plus 30 which means it's a minus 10 it's a 320 that's the best thing I can do because if I withdraw it I lose so I just have to hope I win it so uh, three cubes on debate plus 30 so that's um, all MPs is 330, minus 10 is 320. So I need a plus 10 for this to pass. If I don't, it's the end of the game anyway. So all on this card. Looks like the game went to the dog. It's so difficult to work against Gladstone's sort of super, super debate skills. Um, his, his priority for all of his cubes is just to trash the bills. And so he does that. Um... Yeah, but the doghouse room, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be cast into the River Thames, I'm afraid. Um, that's it for the markets of Salisbury. Let's see what it is. Let's, uh, the ham, final, how the final nail in the coffin. It's minus one. So it's 319. It fails. So it fails. The dog's act is dog poo. Uh, the uncertainty goes. Um, because I failed. Uh, my standing goes down by two, so I'm on eight. His goes up by two to 11. He gets three victory points for that. all that's worth. One, two, three. And then at the end of that, the challenge phase, he has much more standing than I. On eight, he's on 11. He just challenges me in Parliament, and I get sacked, and he takes over. And that's the end of the game. So Salisbury, Salisbury and Peel... Just couldn't stand up to Gladstone's rhetoric, I'm afraid. That's it. So that's your um, that's your Prime Minister Clockwork One scenario. Uh, be following it and um, uh, get something out of it. As I say, there is a Clockwork Two, which this wouldn't be the end of the game, where we would switch from Prime Minister to being the opposition leader and try and get back in, uh, and the Clockwork would take over as the Prime Minister. Uh, and of course, there's a multiplayer version of this. Uh, I think you still use the clockwork with two players, but three and four, uh, you uh, you actually have uh, uh, you don't use the clockwork anymore. So you, uh... yeah, Nordic. Let let it be known. Uh, yeah, p p on the evening standard, get it out on the evening standard for for everybody going home. Yeah, the Marcus Salisbury has been sacked officially and the conservative uh government has fallen and the liberals have taken over with william gladstone so yes there you go um <laughs> i'm truly blue now yes and it was sort of darker blue than i'd normally like it but yes that's true but good um well thanks everybody for popping in and having a watch and having a chat thanks for stuff in the chat and um yeah we'll see you next time on the channel with uh with some more stuff coming up there is there is more stuff coming up and there's more frequency there uh will be more frequency uh there as well uh but for now uh that's uh that's the blue tweezers channel for tonight thanks very much for popping in uh, I presume you can still pick up a copy of this game. It's only just been released, so if you like it, go for it and um, give GMT uh, a, uh, a a boost. That'd be good. 
Until then, bye for now.